This is Brian Ramirez with Motherboards.org. How are you guys doing out there? I haven't seen you in a while. Thought I'd give you a follow-up on what's been going on. We are going to do a tutorial on how to install a water block on a video card. We are using a Zotac GTX 560Ti and a Danger Dan GTX 560 water block. We're going to go over the steps. What you'll need to do this is you'll need alcohol, paper towels or cotton swabs, a screwdriver, um, and some kind of a, a, a pliers. And that's really about it. So let's go ahead and jump in and let's get started and go with it and see what we get. As you can see, this is a GTX 560 Ti from Zotac. It's a reference design card. The reason why we're going with a reference design is simply because we're, the water block we're using requires a reference designed video card. So let me go through the steps on how to remove this. First thing you're going to do is start by removing the screws on top of the card. You're going to want to start by just gently turning each, each screw until you can feel it loosen a little bit. You don't want to loosen any one screw up too much because what that'll do is it'll put pressure in one area of the card, which isn't exactly a good thing to do. And once you get them loosened a little bit, then just go back and remove them. One thing to keep in mind too, to crown yourself out before doing this kind of work, which is something I already did off camera, Moving the heat sink is, is kind of difficult, not really at this part. I'll show you where it gets to be a bit tedious. Installing the water block, though, is not all that difficult. It's just time consuming and you want to make sure that you, uh, you follow the instructions to the letter. This is going to be used in a video that we're doing showing a an upgrade that I'm actually doing to my system that you guys have seen before. It's had a couple of upgrades since that video and I'll go over that with you when we get to it. But this is going to be a full series of videos showing you a guide on basic water cooling. Hopefully you'll find it educational and interesting. Okay, once the screws are removed, now we're going to remove the screws from the side of the card. And these are the last screws that are actually holding the shroud onto the card. Looks like we've got two more here, one here on the I.O. plate and one here on the side. Now we can remove the upper part of the shroud and that just comes off like that and now you can see the entire heat sink and fan underneath it. Now that we've got the shroud removed, I'm going to show you how to remove these uh, nuts here that hold on your, uh, your video cable. All you basically do is you take a pair of pliers, loosen them a little bit, and then you can just unscrew them by hand. But as you can see, this is still holding on. Part of the uh, heat sink. So we'll go ahead and remove this. And that'll make it easier to pull the heat sink off. So once that's done, there are a couple of screws around the fan. There are three of them actually. All you have to do is remove those. And 
These are somewhat difficult to get to because the fan is in the way. Basically, you just want to remove anything that looks like it's going to be in the way or hinder you from removing the heat sink. Okay, what this is here is it's basically your fan controller. Just go ahead and remove it. You're, of course, not going to need that if you're water cooling. So that gets removed. And all you're left with is the card and the heat sink. Now, here's the tedious part. You have to be very careful when removing and separating the heat sink from the card itself because if you pry too hard, you can end up either cracking the card or damaging the GPU itself. So what I recommend doing is taking the card in your hand and taking the heat sink in your other hand like this and just gently rock back and forth until you can feel it start to separate. And as you can see, it is starting to separate. Once you see the back end start to separate, then start working a little on the front. What you can do too is try twisting it. You want to have a twisting motion like this, and there it goes. And that is how you remove your heat sink and your fan from your GPU. This step involves removing all the residue from your GPU from your RAM and from your voltage regulators. As you can remember, there was a heat sink that covered those and the thermal pads leave behind a residue. So you want to get all that stuff off of there because if you don't, it will interfere with the cooling performance that's provided by your water block. And you don't want to use old thermal paste anyway. So that's the GPU cleaned up. Now just lightly go over your RAM chips and your VRMs. Your RAM chips are these large black chips around your GPU. There's still going to be a little residue on them. You just want to gently go over them and try to remove as much of it as you can. Same thing with your VRMs. Now that that's done, what came with this water block is a sheet of thermal padding. What this is used for is this is used to make contact between your RAM chips and your VRMs and the water block. This is what helps to keep those cool. So what you need to do is cut it to the approximate size of the chips that it's going to cover and it, it, it will adhere, it adhere itself to those chips. We now have our thermal padding placed over our RAM chips and our VRMs. The next step is going to be to seat the water block here onto the cart and then screw it down. It's going to go on here. What you want to do first is put on some thermal paste, which we have right here. What you want to do actually is put just a little more than you would on a processor. As you can tell, this is a larger chip than on a processor. And what I like to do is I use what's called an X method. Put a little in the center and then a little just coming off of it toward each four, each of the four corners. And that gives you a bit of an X pattern. That'll give you a nice even spread over your GPU. And you just lay it on top like that. And there you have it. Now that we've got it situated on top of the card, we're going to flip it over and start screwing it down with the provided hardware. 
basically the screws are going to go through the various points in the card to hold the water block in place onto the card. What you want to do is you want to start from the center and work your way out. Now these screws have two washers. I've got a metal washer and a rubber washer. The thing to remember as you're screwing these in is that you do not want the rubber washer to stick out around the sides of the metal washer. That means that you've screwed it in too tight. You want it tight, but you don't want it too tight because that will end up warping your card and that's not a good thing. So now that we've done this one, we're going to do the next five around this area. done. There are just three left and they're toward the back of the card. That's it. That is how you install a water block on a video card.